Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. <laughs> Let's see, I have to say okay to that. Okay, good. All right, so then I'm going to start, as you already are familiar with, with this little med meditation. So if you want to join, you can also take a nice few deep breaths in and out. And with every out-breath, release all the tension that might still be in your body or your mind at this moment. And gently bring your focus to your heart, if you wish. And imagine how from your heart, that famous silver line of energy begins to flow down through your body, down through your belly, down through your legs all the way down to your feet, through the building and into the ground. And picture it sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. Whatever this looks like to you right now, it is absolutely perfect. And you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in a way that feels natural and logical to you right now. And when you feel that you've made this connection in your own way, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, traveling back up the same way you came, returning to the house and the room that you're in. And now imagine that earth energy flowing into your body, starting at the soles of your feet, moving up to your knees, embracing every single cell along the way. While every cell begins to resonate in harmony with that earth vibration. From your knees to your hips, the same thing happens. Every cell is fully embraced by this vibration. Through your belly or lower back. Up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in. Imagine that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line now going on a second journey, this time moving upward. From your heart, through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky. And higher and higher beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer. And into the cosmos, your silver line flies effortlessly, this time amongst the planets and the stars. Until eventually you reach the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun, however you imagine you would like to do that right now. And when you feel that you have in your own way also made that connection, imagine that solar energy too then flowing through your silver line, traveling back same way you came across the universe, returning to your blue little magical planet, returning to the continent, the region, the house, and eventually the room that you are now choosing to be focused in. And imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your body, starting ever so gently at the top of your head, moving through your head, through your neck, into your chest and between the shoulder blades 
And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too flowing into your heart, emerging with the earth energy vibration that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For we are here and we thank you for the invitation of this co-creation. Now, how are you and how can we be of service? I am absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here with me again. It's been too long. Thank uh, you. And we are rejoiced to be speaking with you again as well. Thanks, Arjun. Yes, I have many questions for you. And um, I'd like to start with, to what extent do the Yael engage with other extraterrestrial civilizations, such as, or for instance, the Yasasani, the Reptilians, the Syrians, etc., or more? Or Who do you engage with? to share information and collaborate with. All right, thank you. As you may have perceived before, via other messengers, translators, interpreters, in that sense, of extra dimensional energy vibration and messages, we are part of a galactic federation. We are in contact in that way with hundreds of different civilizations. When you mention the, the Sasani, understand that we are genetically related to them as we are to you as well. And in that sense, we are closer to them in the literal sense and communicate with them and the Shahiyal, the, you could say, species that has been created that has sprung forth from the hybridization program, linearly speaking, after the Sasani, but before us, we are connected to them as well, very closely, very intensely, in the sense that there is a lot of communication. We are truly family in that sense. And these three, Sasani, Shahiyal, and Yahiyal work together hand in hand in communication with Earth, with mankind, with humanity, because we are all so closely and also, again, genetically related to you. We have a special role to play in your awakening journey. We get to reflect specific information to you that is not necessarily, you could say, relevant for perhaps some of the other galactic species that are also in communication with you at this point. Now, most of the civilizations that are communicating with Earth in this moment of your transition, awakening, ascension, however you wish to call it, prefer to remain anonymous. They choose not to come in, quote unquote, with too much information all at once. We really do very much understand the curiosity. We understand the reasoning uh, of the rational mind. We understand the questions from mankind. Where are you from? Who are you? What does your world look like? Where is it exactly located? But we also understand that you are in the beginning stages of beginning to remember your own multidimensional nature. And therefore, the idea of multidimensionality in general the idea of receiving through your greater remembrance a greater overview of what it actually means to be focused in a time-space reality construct or in a physical dream reality, as we refer to it, to the version of reality that you're choosing to co-create together on your planet at this time and age. Since you are still in the beginning stages of this greater remembrance of all that you really are, all these aspects of your greater selves, we have chosen, now speaking very broadly, we as extra-dimensionals and extraterrestrials reaching out to you in this time, we have chosen very deliberately to 
offer our reflections, to offer our gifts in a very nuanced manner. This is why so many of you and more and more of you are receiving information from us, from extraterrestrial and multidimensional origin, from guides and parallel simultaneous incarnations, through your dreams, your meditations, your trans states, your medicine plant journeys, and so forth and so forth. It is through these roots of least resistance that will offer you the most relevant information one step at a time. Now, every single human being receiving such information and passing it on, if they choose to allow themselves to feel excitement to do so, if it is in their hearts to do so, if it is something they love to do, they all bring different facets of a greater, you could say, prism. And by listening to one another, you as a human species are now putting the puzzle pieces together so that you can, from your own point of view, your collective point of view, grow together and soothe into, ease into, the gentle realization that you truly are not alone, that there is such a thing as a multiverse, that everything is innately connected. All of these fundamental pieces of information, all of this, you could say, base information that is needed to create a platform amongst your own species, from which or on which multidimensional communication can be had in a collective and open and public form, that is what you are focusing on right now. We, again, speaking generally for all those galactic civilizations reaching out to you right now, connecting, communicating, reflecting with you right now, we screen, uh, quote unquote, your energy. We tune in uh, with your vibrational state of being. This is something that happens for the collective in every single here and now and individually. You will find that some of your human uh, beings, individuals, are choosing to be space holders, are choosing to be, in a sense, anchor points, emitting the vibration of some of this information, translating it in such a way that others feel free to tune in with it in their own tempo, in their own way. And this is why every single messenger, every voice counts, even if the message has not been perceived entirely clearly just yet. There will be an audience that is ready to receive it in that way, they will be given an opportunity to use that piece of information as a stepping stone. And they will, if they allow themselves to follow their hearts, their excitement in every single here and now without pushing or pulling and without insisting on the outcome whilst remaining in a positive state of being regarding everything that does enter their lives as a result from their actions. Whilst they do that, they will then synchronistically attract to them Additional information, fine-tuned information, more information, new messengers, new angles of perception so that they can evolve beyond what they've been given before or better said, what they have allowed into their version of reality before. We understand that you are all climbing, quote-unquote, these ladders in your own way, that you are all traveling through your own individual and collective soul journeys with specific themes attached to these live explorations in many cases. And we scan what we are allowed to share with all of you individually or collectively in any given here and now. It is as you grow that more information will become available. It is as you 
evolve and allow uh, yourselves to shine brightly by following your heart, your excitement, your compassion, by rediscovering your ever present interconnectedness as a species and to the stars, that you will automatically receive the answers to the more detailed questions as you asked before. Who have you been speaking to? Who are you hanging out with? Who are you scheming with reaching out to us? No need to worry. We are having uh, a great time. And we treat this communication with the utmost level of respect. Beautiful. Wow. That's very interesting to me. I I didn't ever think about that, that there is way more information, but it's being metered as yes. how ready we are to receive and how we're evolving. So, uh, of course, now I'm so curious, but it is beautiful to know if we continue to be on good behavior, more will be revealed. Absolutely. And we love uh, your curiosity. Realize if you wish that curiosity, if it is free from any sense of insistence, is an extension of unconditional love. It is an extension of your desire to grow, to explore, to rediscover more of that which you already in essence, in essence really are. So it is just another pulse, a heartbeat into the cosmos that we receive, that is always being received. And whatever question you may have been asking in that sense is immediately being answered energetically. When you allow it to be perceived by you, you will immediately receive the answer. Mm -hmm. But it depends on how ready you allow yourself to be. Some people choose to travel that journey in a certain tempo. Others travel it in a different tempo, all for your own reasons. And all of these reasons we honor and respect. Beautiful. Does every human being on the planet today on Earth have the same galactic genetic makeup? In other words, components from very particular races. And if so, what are they? You all have all without exception, extraterrestrial and multidimensional segments and components in your DNA. Now, the way that these are structured and organized differs per individual and is in perfect harmony with your soul theme. Realize that your soul understood coming into this particular playing field that you all are, in a sense, hybrids by nature. It understood that this vessel, this avatar, this DNA expression, crystallization, serves the theme of the soul perfectly, or it wouldn't have matched up in that particular way. You're all singing your own unique song. For some of you, you could say that the Anu, Naki imprints are more obviously measurable, if you wish to put it that way. For others, you can find more Syrian, more Arcturian, more Pleiadian, or other forms of galactic data stored in their genetic makeup. Now, when we say genetic makeup, some of this may have crystallized into physicalization, could have been pointed out or can be pointed out, particularly once your scientists begin to understand a little bit more about what they currently term junk DNA. But for now, most of that in such detail has not yet been understood. So it cannot be recognized as such just yet for most of mankind. And some of this information of which we just mentioned some examples is only with you energetically so it has not crystallized in the physical it may not be visible to your physical eye at this moment in your evolution yet you carry with you or these individuals carry with them a particular 
energetic DNA imprint that allows them certain features in this life or allows them to have certain memories of other star systems and may have them feeling, oh, this is where I am from. This is what you sometimes observe in people when, for instance, they just hear the word Pleiadian for the first time or they see the actual star, star system in your skies and they instantly begin crying or they feel very moved by it or it is followed by certain lucid dreams. All of these things reveal to you that for them, that particular energetic marker is very active in their system. Their soul is using it on this earth-oriented journey in a very active manner. And it is more relevant right now that some people feel this to such a conscious degree that they feel even inclined to speak about it or share this information with others because as a species you have co-created together a timeline on which as you may know open contact may crystallize in your following years or decades to come depending on the timeline you choose can be fast can be a little slower in either case it will be in divine timing only but so, yes, there are many ingredients, some of which we are not allowed to speak about, again, because it would confuse you and it is not something your species is completely ready to embrace or process just right now. But yes, there are many galactic ingredients that are part of your overall makeup that all play a role in your co-created storyline as you play it out together right now. Okay, so I'm going to push a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ask you more about open contact. Thank you for going there. Oh, thank you. So I understand it could be very soon, and I definitely heard you say it depends on which timeline and co-creation yes. and so forth. Is there a probability beyond the possibility about when open contact will happen and when open contact occurs who can we expect to start meeting at first from where all right thank you for this question so yes there are many many different timeline probabilities at this point some of you listening to this information right now tuning in listening to the recording of this conversation later down the line, speaking from the now of this co-creation with you, Debbie. Some of you may find yourself experiencing uh, this idea of disclosure, open contact relatively soon. And this means within less than a decade and others may not experience it in this lifetime at all. You all individually create the timeline on which this unfolds. You all individually shift to the timeline of the collective that matches your soul journey. Your individual soul has a particular yearning of what it wishes to learn in this life or wishes to gather when it comes to specific pieces of information that can only be found in this particular physical dream reality playing field that you are exploring in that you are discovering more of yourselves in really when it comes down to it and it is through that prism that you shift in a sense to the timeline that is appropriate for that soul's journey that brings you information that is relevant for you now for some people it may be relevant to experience the idea of disclosure unfolding in a highly accelerated manner allowing them to experience the idea of what you could call worldwide mass landings fully accepted by mankind within, like we said before, less than a decade. Other people may need 30 or 50 years for that level of open contact 
to crystallize in their version of reality and yet others do not deem it relevant to that degree that it has to crystallize at all and it may not do so for them in this lifetime all of these particular you could say timelines are still open to you right now as you allow yourself to live in alignment with your higher self to follow your heart to live by that formula that has been shared with you so many times before you will shift automatically and in the most rapid way the most efficient way possible to the timeline that is most relevant for you you will always be exactly where you're quote unquote supposed to be but if et contact is relevant for you we would say do not overthink it do not push it allow yourself to be present in the now and you will find yourself shifting most effortlessly to the timeline where that can occur because if you're busy pondering thinking maybe even worrying wondering if you're doing everything right in order for yourself to shift to that one timeline where et contact will eventually occur you're in fact delaying your own evolution into the probability of being shifted to that type of timeline pushing or pulling delays insistence is resistance so allow yourself to be present in every single here and now and you will see paradoxically the you could say implosion of the time space reality illusion and you will find yourself shifting most effortlessly most smoothly to the timeline that is most relevant for you and if et contact is a part of that you will experience it you asked furthermore who are most likely the ones to open this contact with you with mankind at this point uh, you could say that there is a shared first place this is a consideration between ourselves the hybrid species you know as the yahiel and the pleiadians the physical oriented pleiadians that look most like you there are many beings from the pleiadian star system we are now pointing out those that look a lot like you and mankind your own species humanity from the future from a future timeline but not as far ahead as for instance were the greys so closer to you but from a positive timeline for whom and here is where it gets perhaps a little bit confusing so we won't go too deeply into that but for whom open et contact in their history has already taken place and their planet is having open contact already but this is one version of earth from which humanity can choose to quote unquote travel back in time and be your first ets mm -hmm. so it's between these three for the reasons that all of us all of these candidates look like you a lot physically by appearance and therefore the potential shock that may come with opening communication with other species from other galaxies or other dimensional realities other planets other worlds will be likely less upsetting for mankind mm. which doesn't mean by the way that there are not also other species having contact with you though be it on a smaller scale other looking species we mean by that and how can humanity best prepare for the contact with these benevolent beings how can we prepare and how can we collaborate with our galactic family collaborate with each other collaborate with your fellow man collaborate with your earth connect with your gaia when you feel your full grounding with the earth when you feel your full alignment with your own higher self when you allow yourself to follow your heart to the best of your ability without pushing or pulling as far as you can take it without insistence as to where it ought to lead you you will find yourself in the perfect here and now all the time you will constantly be present with the brilliant essence that is truly you 
And this goes for every single human uh, being that chooses to do so. This allows you to heighten your own vibrational state of being. This allows you to effortlessly shift to a version of Earth that is of a high matching vibrational wavelength. And that allows us to see you, to be able to make smooth and easy and effortless communication with you, to open the contact from both ends on a similar wavelength. If you allow yourself to think of open contact as logical, if only logical, at least more logical than a version of Earth where open contact will never occur, then you're beginning to allow yourself to become an anchor point for this idea. You're beginning to allow yourself to become a broadcast center for that vibrational wavelength, which matches up with a collective of humanity, a version of the collective of humanity that thinks and feels about this the same way. It is no more or less than plainly logical that open contact at one point would occur. When you find yourselves thinking of things of, of things like your own multidimensional nature, your ability to communicate with each other telepathically, to align with your earth, to listen to the voice of your Gaia, your mother. In that way, you find yourselves in groups of people that will support you on your journey and you will support each other in a deepening and a deeper understanding of your true core essence. This lights you up like a light bulb being turned up and it allows us to see you more clearly and again to find you more effortless and easily. And I just want to, before I move on, repeat these words you said earlier because it was so powerful. And that is insistence is resistance. And I think yes. that is so in all of life. Um, very beautiful and well said. Well, thank you. I want to shift to the subject of shamanism. And specifically shamanism and shamans in connection with our galactic family. How do shamanic practices link to our galactic family? Either that the work they do allows them to access star family with ease and communicate and commune, or that they're receiving practices from star family or anything else therein. What is their connection, the shamans and our galactic family? All right, thank you. This is a two-way stream when it comes to the appearance, the execution of the practices. It is a two-way stream. There is the intuitive understanding within the shaman to allow themselves to play, to explore in the physical dream reality in a certain way and allow it to shift into a bit of a semi-physical state. This is what you often call trends, for instance. A dream state is, it, is what it is called by the Aborigines. They allow themselves to shift in that vibrational wavelength that creates a neutral zone and overlap between the physical and the non-physical, which is like a dusk or a dawn in your awareness, in your consciousness. It is where the illusion of the vision is faded and it merges with a higher state of knowingness if you can stay awake and present in that. Shamans understand this. They understand how to dance on these edge of realities. They understand how to bridge worlds. Now you all, in essence, deep within yourselves, understand how to do this. It is just something that they have trained themselves to do frequently. And so they have become very skilled at it and teachers in many cases. These beings are often humans that are already relatively sensitive by nature and they have received the proper training and allowed themselves to follow the intuitive nudges that would bring them the tools and ingredients to allow them to hold space for this in-between state so that the messages that come from the quote-unquote other side or higher dimensional wavelengths can then be consciously perceived by them and passed on to people who are perhaps asking for advice or for specific reflections or for 
their tribe, however it is being used after that. Some of the tips and reflections that are being offered from that other side or higher dimensional wavelength, yes, definitely do come from your star family. And sometimes that information includes tips as to how to fine tune the practices that the shaman is already using. What type of drumming, what type of dancing, what type of chanting, what type of plant medicine, for instance, they can use to travel with, they can use as a permission slip to access that state that is within them, even without those permission slips. But very often permission slips are being used also as a type of honoring of being focused in the earth playing field, as a type of honoring, of honoring your earth, your Gaia, the mother, with which they dance so consciously, with which they are so incredibly connected that the heartbeat of Gaia and the heartbeat in their own chest feels to them as one. They are aware of harmonizing this vibration and how to do it. They can explain to others how to do this and offer ceremonies as a stepping stone, again, as a permission slip, as a tool for other people to play with so that they can meet them on the same level of understanding. After which you can always access that state of being in yourself again. When it comes to that, really, the use of any permission slip or plant medicine that has brought you, quote unquote, to a specific state of being, or better said, that you have allowed yourself to use as a tool so that you could shift yourself to that state of being, then after having experienced that even only once is no longer truly needed. You can always access that state of being again because now on even a cellular level, you know what it feels like. When you remember a particular planned uh, medicine journey that you have ever made, that was very impressive to you at the time, you're right back there. You're right back there. You don't have to necessarily use the same plant medicine again to regain that same state of being. It is still in you, even though from the point where you are focused now in this time-space orientation journey, it may be perceived differently. You may label it just a memory or a vague memory even of something that you have experienced before. Nonetheless, the core essence of that information is still there and accessible to you. So when it comes to shamans offering these practices, they are the translators. They function as reminders for their surroundings to allow others to meet them on that same wavelength so that they can incorporate that same understanding within themselves and evolve from there. D, you said, there was an additional question. Can you repeat this, please? Mm. Um, ancient shamanic, well, not ancient, but current shamanic practices linking us to our galactic family and <clears throat> whether they actually access direct communication with star family uh, when I, you know, it's interesting because I want to say when they're in a trance, but I also, my sense of them is they get to such a state that they can actually induce an experience or a connection by will, by virtue of knowing how to do that. So I, I hope that reiterates the question is yes, that they have this contact, this ongoing star family contact. And there may be downloads, there may be wisdom being taught that they can bring back to us. Is that correct? Absolutely. We just confirmed that in the previous answer already. But with your additional part of the question, we understand more clearly what you're asking. So as they allow themselves to engage in these practices, not only do they perceive information from higher vibrational wavelengths or from their star family, your star family, in many ways, telepathically, some of them have physical contact. This is never stopped. There are, though be it, small segments of some of your indigenous tribes, only a handful of people, truly, in a sense, 
worldwide at this point. But physical contact has continued amongst some of them throughout your history. And we mean physical contact, the landing of ships, the meeting face-to-face, -face, being able to touch and telepathically speak while eye-gazing, basically. This has been the case for many Bedouin, uh, you could say, tribes in the Africas. Some of this has been talked about, like it has been shared from by word of mouth. It has been brought into your current day awareness through what you now understand to be storytelling within these tribes. There are tribes that are still speaking about the intense physical contact they used to have in the past, such as the Dogon tribe in Africa. There still is open communication with relatively many Amazonian tribes that are aware of their relationships to what they also call their star brothers and sisters, to many of the Native American tribes before, mostly before, the lands were taken over by Western society. But very few, very few individuals within these tribes do still have had these encounters. So contact, in that sense, has been experienced as effortless for us, again, speaking very broadly, of extraterrestrial species and your own species if those that reached out to us allowed themselves to be in a fully in a full harmonic state of being with their own higher self and their connection to the earth it is being in that pure alignment that makes them so easily accessible for us yeah, beautiful answer. I'm not surprised. There are oh, thank you. all over the world, indigenous cultures, and some of them may surprise people. There are shamans in China, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, yes. Malaysia, Mongolia, Philippines, uh, Siberia, North Eurasia, yes. Australia, yes. Africa, the Arctic people, the Russia. American Indians, yes. Peru. Costa Rica, and so much more, these beautiful, beautiful people, do these shamans actually time travel? Do they time travel? Do they portal travel? Period. And do they also use those methods to connect with the extraterrestrial races? The short answer would be yes. The little bit longer answer would be, but you all do. You all time travel. Perhaps not in this specific way, as we described before, with the tools and techniques that they use to walk between the realms, to allow a space to open up that seems to be the borderline of realities, and to remain conscious in that. But when you fall asleep on a nightly basis, you do the same. You just choose to not be fully consciously aware of that. You choose to not have a full recollection of that. When you fall asleep, you travel through that same gateway, through that same portal that allows you to disconnect from the linear time-space illusion that you're so strongly focused on throughout your daytime or that you have trained yourself to be so strongly focused on, most of you, throughout your daytime. And you allow yourself to travel freely without the seeming limitation of space and time and in that moment you are cross-connecting with all of those overlapping simultaneous incarnations that are relevant to you all the guides all the dimensional reality wavelength worlds physical and non-physical in nature whilst you gather the data that you feel you need on a subconscious level and you take it home you could say in what some people experience as the memory of a dream upon waking up and the dream may seem nonsensical but what the rational mind does 
it wraps all the symbology or all the pieces, the information, the ingredients that you took from these other dimensional wavelengths. It wraps them in symbols so that it can make somewhat sense out of it, so that it represents some degree of the journeys you just made to your rational mind if you choose to remember your dream. And then you can play with that. It's an invitation to play. You are on an infinite and everlasting journey wherein you are constantly invited to play in the rediscovering of your greater self. But you are correct. Shamans from all over the world, indigenous tribes from all over the world, all function as lucid dream walkers, lucid reminders that remind you of how this play can be put into practice consciously and how you can use it in your dance as a species in balance with the earth. Arjun, do you in your society have any shamanic or shamanic-like practices, ceremonies, rituals that you enjoy? You could say that there are definitely individuals in our species that enjoy playing with our planet and the nature, the animals, the elements that can be found on there. You could definitely make the comparison of seeing that as shamanic practices, even though they often differ from how they are being executed on your world. But it is another extension of these individuals, joy, expression of play, beingness in nature. You could say that fundamentally, all of us have a very strong connection to our planet. All of us connect to it in a very conscious way. We touch and communicate energetically with what is present on our planet. By that we mean we can either telepathically or by physically connecting to, for instance, a tree, exchange a lot of information, tell the tree our story and have the tree communicate its version of reality with us so that we can understand the tree's essence, its beingness, and harmonize with it for a moment if we wish. This is what is done by all of us in our childhood. It is the exploration of our world. It's the hello, Yael planet. It's the introduction to our world. It's how we get to know our surroundings. The telepathic communication does not only take place amongst ourselves, but also with nature. So you could say that there is a strong fundament of what you might describe as a type of shamanic practice, even though it is not ritualistic in that way. But then there are some individuals who take it a notch up and really play with the elements, really play with nature in such a way that they become experts at speaking with the trees or they collect tree vibrations from several planets, compare them, create new species of trees, hybrid trees, if you wish, play with the ringing, the singing, the tonation of the auric field that these plants or trees emanate and create orchestrations of that. It goes far beyond your wildest dreams and then they become experts at doing that. This is what it looks like on our world to follow your highest excitement in any given moment to the best of your ability without insistence as to where it ought to lead you. You can have a world where you live the same way. Professions that you cannot even find words for right now will emerge effortlessly from your species if you truly, deeply, and boundlessly allow yourselves to play in alignment with your higher self and with integrity to all else that lives and that is around you. Trees, trees sing, that is. Absolutely, so do your trees. Every plant, every blade of grass, everything is in essence energy. It all has its own harmonic. 
you can choose to communicate with that. A shaman knows this. A shaman on your world from your indigenous tribes is a reminder of this. They translate it in different ways. They all have their own practices to reflect that back to you if you wish to learn from them in that way. Some sing, some drum, some dance, some dream. There are many, many ways. Some use stones, crystals, wood, what have you. But all of these things are mere permission slips, mere tools to express more clearly in the physical reality, dream reality, that you are choosing to be focused in and to co-create together, that everything in essence is energy, 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 a song, light, vibration. Thank you. Wow. Oh, thank you. I'm going to shift to time travel. And All right. Tell me about time travel. What is that like for you? Is it about stargates? Is it, is it about portals? What is the experience like? What do you utilize for time travel? Our hearts. An alignment between our hearts and our intention. The mind in our civilization is the servant of the heart. We sense with the heart. We, as a tuning fork, allow ourselves to be, you could say, guided into the direction of that which is of similar vibration. Like attracts like, as you say in your language. It is through that vibrational resonance, harmony, that we cross-connect with your time, space, reality, time frame right now in this dialogue and whenever cross-communication is taking place. Even though linearly you would pinpoint us to be focused in the future, we are having this conversation in a here and now moment that is perceived as the here and now by you and us simultaneously. This is a reminder or functions as a reflection to your species and anyone willing to understand the bigger picture. It is a reminder that there really only is one here and now that envelops everything. That is the origin of all that is. There only is here and now. Time travel is one term that you use in your vocabulary to invite others to remember that there are simultaneous parallel dimensional realities through which you can choose to connect, to cross connect, to tune in with, to line up with. This, however, is in essence always done through the heart, also for you. When you remember yourself as a child, the heart energy vibration, the electromagnetic field of the heart, transports your focus awareness to the concept of that version of you, allowing your here and now version of you to meet that vibration in a way that embraces it from your current point of view, your current perspective. And so when you share with others how you felt when you were four and this and that happened, is your current version of that individual, that other person, the four-year-old you, that lives in their, you could say, dimensional reality where they are still four years old and having that experience in the way they were having it which differs from the way you remember it because every single time you remember something, you create in the infinite here and now version your new perspective of that. This also means that time travel in the classical sense of the world or as in the classical sense of the word or as it has been depicted in many of your older movies doesn't really exist. You can't truly go back to the exact same dimensional reality that, say, you were focused in when you were a child. You would be cross-connecting to your version of what that childhood looked like, your version as created from the now. Can you follow along? Yes, because all I'm thinking is then you can change things. In the here and now, you can change your viewpoint 
for instance, of childhood or any occasion in one's life. Yes. And if you are going to change it, then when you venture back, that is what you're going to experience. Exactly. And change is omnipresent. Every change is a total change. So with every single change, every breath you take, every blink of your eyes, you've shifted through billions of different realities already. So if you would condense that a little bit, simplify it to some degree, you're constantly evolving. You're only experiencing ever the here and now from your individual point of view. That you perspective is constantly evolving, constantly shifting through different dimensional realities. And it will create cross connections or bleed throughs or overlaps, however you wish to label it, with other dimensional realities that match its perspective. So if we, as Yahayel, in what you would linearly understand to be the future, can allow our heart's vibration to pick up on a signal that is emanated from you in what to us seems the past, we are dreaming each other up in an infinite here and now moment where we see each other in unique ways right now, right now, right now, and right now, and right now, infinitely new ways wherein we are co-creating one another in our simultaneous and yet unique evolutionary journeys. That was brilliant. And I just got to say, I'm so proud of myself right now because what what an amazing creation that I get to hang out with you and have these conversations. How did I get so lucky? How did I even know to have this now with you in this moment and this precious conversation and information exchange and enlightenment and illumination? That's Would now you- that blows my mind at a whole new level. Oh, thank you so much for applauding yourself and allowing yourself to blow your own mind in this way. What you're feeling is your feeling. It is your creation. It is your willingness. It is the result of the momentum that you've been putting in for years and years and years. Linearly speaking, that is allowing it to sense the level of fulfillment that comes with being open that comes with being present, that comes with being in an allowing state. Thank you for gifting this to yourself. You're gifting it to yourself. And we are honored to be able to reflect back to you the brilliance of your being. Mm -mm -mm. I am deeply moved. Thank you. Thank you. And iteration. I will, I'm, have three final questions for you. And the first is, Arjun, do you go back to your planet, your people, your beloveds, your creatures maybe, and tell them, I had a conversation today with Debbie Dashinger. Uh, we, we talked about these things and express how you felt about it. Pretty much everybody curious to listen in to this information that is being exchanged right now is hearing it right now. The moment I open a cross connection in the way that we are co-creating right now, I send out a vibration that is recognized by my loved ones, my species, as you just described it in your words, which is recognized by all those for whom this is relevant. So within our community, within our collective information that is relevant, so for anyone curious about this, will be perceived by them right away. There is no time lag. There is no time lag needed because that's not the type of journey we're playing with our physical dream reality. It is of a more fluid nature. It has a more immediate, you could say, manifestation experience baked in. This is what you are evolving into on earth too if you allow yourself to go with the flow and allow this to crystallize in your version of reality by letting go of concepts such as being insistent about something and so forth or feeling bitterness or jealousy all of these type of 
emotions, all the belief systems that these emotions stem from reveal to you that you are playing with the illusion of attachment to certain time frames, which slows time down. It densifies your perception of your version of reality. When you lighten up, you will find that time appears to be moving faster. So to answer your question, I don't really have to go home and tell people about it because they already know. We're telepathically connected and the knowingness is instantaneous. But we're having an enormous amount of fun and joy. And you are being sent right now by my collective an enormous amount of gratitude for sharing what you're sharing right now and doing what you're doing with the platform that you have co-created on your role. And my love and hello and gratitude back that you entrust me and connect with me at this level. It, it changes my life. Since I first met you, gosh, at least I think four years ago, without a doubt, I have grown so much in these conversations. And I remember being filled with fear in the beginning, not of you, but of contact and you teasing me at the time. And yes, I'm a completely different person because of our interaction. So I thank you for doing that. And our joy and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If I understand correctly, it was the Arcturians who sent Jesus and Mary Magdalene to this planet. I'll call them Yeshua and Magdalene for short. Is that true? And in light of the kind of exquisite beings that they sent here to Earth, do you, do the Yael send any beings to be here and live out a life on Earth? And who would that be? All right, well, let us start with the first part of your question. Yeshua and Magdalene weren't necessarily sent by the Arcturian energy in that sense, but they were strongly connected to it. There is, you could say, a multitude of energy fields that is supporting Earth in its evolution. These collectives, often non-physical and very high vibrational in nature, are aware when a key figure, so to speak, incarnates on your world to bring a specific message to mankind. This was the case, obviously, for Yeshua and Magdalene in their own ways, and some that surrounded them in order to complete the storyline that you needed for mankind to learn from these explorations what could be learned from it realize that there was an entire cast necessary quite a crew to make this movie to create this storyline to write this book however you wish to put it symbolically now Joshua in particular was aware of a multitude of these non-physical guiding energy fragments or aspects that embrace your world and are part in the assisting and supporting of the evolution that is probable for mankind when you choose to live in alignment and choose to live from unconditional love as he so friendly reminded you all of is a possibility for all of you he never said follow me he reminded you that you can live like him he taught by example, which is really the only most efficient way to teach anyway. In this way, we wouldn't say that he was sent by the Arcturian Collective, rather that he was aware of the Arcturian energy, and more so he was called in, if you wish, by the human collective. He was the incarnation of your own collective oversoul just as were the Buddha and Krishna and other, you could say, teachers that have been identified as prominent figures by mankind in your past. You could say that your own collective over soul has found ways to crystallize amongst your species in one or multiple individuals 
always in one way or another to allow there to be an anchor point, a very solid, deeply transformative anchor point on the face of your earth to bring forth a specific vibration that others then can choose to match if they wish. This is always a non-insisting offer and comes from unconditional love. Now, when you ask if we as a ya yell species also send people, there's no need to send really in any case, but you call in, you could say those individuals that you may understand to have high energetic overlap with our own species of which there are many on your planet today. These are without exception, individuals that have simultaneous parallel incarnations within our own society. Now, they have not been sent. You have called them in. You have called them in. Your own species subconsciously has been asking questions about probable future realities, has been desiring more peace, more harmony on your world. And so any galactic species that felt a calling to have extensions or anchor points on the face of your earth and that matched the soul desire of some of the energy vibrations already present in the human collective oversoul would find themselves effortlessly drawn to an incarnation on your world. And so there are many now, and some of them identify themselves as star seeds. Others don't really know how to put this into words, but simply understand from themselves, from a deeper knowingness that they have a connection to the stars. And there is no need necessarily to be able to label this, even though it will be more common knowledge as time evolves, linearly speaking, on your world to be able to identify these things more effortlessly. Does that answer your question? Indeed, it does. Oh, thank you. My final question for you, dear Arjun, is one you've addressed in a sense because you said multiple timelines, multiple choices, multiple probabilities. So with respect and understanding of that, I am curious what we can expect in the future, in the near future. What don't we know? What is humanity not aware of? And can you share some very probable upcoming events for humanity and for our planet? One moment, we're scanning. First of all, in short, in response to your statement or question, what is humanity not aware of? There is lots of things that you are yet about to discover or remember about yourselves. Yet the awareness of all of these things already lies within you. It is dormant within you. It is about to awaken if you choose to shift yourself to the timeline, the probable future version of Earth, where you, first of all, allow yourself to have that awaken within you and then will find yourself in a community where more and more of that will be reflected back to you by others that have found themselves with that part of knowledge clearly awoken in them as well. So you will shift yourself to versions of Earth that match the vibration that you emanate, that you are on. But all awareness already lies within you. You're just playing a game of hide and seek. Now, the relevance of how long it will take before some of this hide and seek part will become a little bit less, let's say, cloudy. To work through or to play with depends on the way you choose to identify all of these things. The light, the more lightheartedly you can allow yourself to identify this journey, the more effortlessly it can be experienced by you. And the more by example you will inspire others how they can choose to look at their versions of reality as well. Now, more concretely, a subject that will become more prominent if you allow it in your media and as a subject to speak about amongst yourselves would be energy, energy in general, but energy also connected to the idea of your, what you now use, fossil fuels and electricity and 
gas for so energy in the very literal sense of the world as, as a in a very literal sense of the word as a substance that you use in your houses in your lives to get around and so forth that type of energy but also energy energy exchange when it comes to finances is something that will become a much more lively subject is what we foresee is something that won't take too long before this begins to gain some acceleration and connected to these is the metaphysical or the spiritual angle of perception when it comes to energy and that too will become more of a subject will become more of a theme for all of you to look at this is an open invitation of course and you can take it or leave it this is all up to you individually but there is a correlation between these three to put it very, very fundamentally, these three are connected. These three are connected. These three are connected. And this is a puzzle for you to play with and all that we are allowed to say about that at this moment of your time. Arjun, thank you so, so much for joining us today. And I thank Vidika, who allows you so graciously to come through her. As always, um, I learned a tremendous amount and I just adore you. We thank you all listening in and you, Debbie, from the bottom of our hearts, unconditionally. We wish you a magical continuation of your day and we may see you soon again in your dreams if you will allow it. Namaste.